Hi and uh, welcome to Summoner. Now next up we've got to head towards the Cavern of Wolong, which will be our next proper dungeon. Although really this town is sort of a dungeon if I'm honest. Lots of enemies, lots of tasks to carry out. But anyway, before we get there we need to make our way up this path, past these guards here. Now I wanted to show off this character here, it's a guard which seems very regretful about what he's done. So he asks us, asks us whether he should kill himself or fight against the resistance. Or with the resistance, I should say. Uh, now, it doesn't... I don't think it matters what you say to him because you don't see him ever again. And I'm not even sure this counts as a side quest, but... Uh, yeah, I decided to uh, talk to him for, for uh, five minutes. And it, I guess it does help when you have like an army of enemies and you show that one he's regretful about it. I mean, granted, it's not going to stop me killing these mofos, but uh, <laughs> it's nice to know they have a little bit of humanity here and there. Now, right round this corner, there is a large amount of enemies, so you don't want to rush into it. That's it. Get over here. Come to Popper. Now, in the previous part, we were given uh, the Tears of Ansi, or some or some, somebody, and the idea is that uh, those there, yeah, we, were, we were essentially given an invincibility item, invisibility item, to be more exact, and I guess the idea is we're meant to make ourselves invisible, and just run past these amount of guards here, which I guess is the proper way to do it, and I will sort of be doing that. But uh, not uh, not exactly that not not the way they want me to do it. Here we go, the tears of Usaman. Usaman, not the most popular of superheroes, but uh... yep. So now we're invisible. Now I was thinking before, how exactly would you speed run this game? And I think a lot of it would c come down to using invincibility spells, just running past all the enemies through through the dungeons. Although that would uh, that would still present the problem of bosses, how would you deal with them? But anyway, I guess, I'm not sure if this is intentional, but you, you can see with the enemy AI, even if they get attacked, if you're invisible they can't see you. Unfortunately, backstab does a lot, a lot, a lot of damage here. <laughs> Oh, don't mind me, folks. I'm just killing your army one by one. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting samurai. Now, again, I said before that you're supposed to just run past these guys, I suppose, but uh, nah, nah, she could uh, do, do with the experience. And when it comes to fighting these guys, you probably don't want to want to do it in a, an open fight because they will probably overwhelm you. Especially at the beginning, there were like five of them. But uh, you know that's what breaking the game is for. Now it's actually quite a long road to the cavern of Wolong here. It's up this path and it twists and turns and goes to lots of houses. And I have to wonder what exactly this area is. Is this meant to be part of the village? It seems very curious to me. Was this something they made just to uh, celebrate and uh, cheer up the dragon? Hmm. And also, sometimes these sound effects they sound a bit off. You can sort of hear, if you can hear it, the sort of squelch that, that plays when the when she backstabs a guy. It seems a bit off, if I'm honest. And really, I sort of have to comment on the AI here. I mean, should... Uh, I guess it would make more sense if they could... if they would turn around once they're attacked. But, yeah, it does seem like an oversight on the game. But uh, then again, this is the PS2. Enemy AIs... well, arguably, the enemy, enemy AIs aren't 
that good anyway, even in modern and current uh, gen consoles. Well, that could just be a limit of gaming. I mean, you know, they're not they're not people. <laughs> the most powerful computer ever is still the human mind. So uh, presumably this whole area gets lit up during the festival with lights and candles and lots of people dancing. That's nice. They should put in a sort of, a, you know, a, you know, a music player in the background. You can have a DJ and have some fancy lights. Uh, now, of course, you can see here that the invisibility does wear off, so you don't want to skedaddle. I mean, you don't want to dawdle. Yeah, and it's a shame I couldn't get some more points into uh, Felice's backstab ability. Because I think a few more hits and she'll be taking these guys out you know, with one backstab. But fortunately at this point you don't need to... Uh... Once you clear out the first wave of enemies here, it's sort of a semi-easy way up to the top here. So luckily our other two members can get in on the action. But of course, these samurai soldiers are, you know, they're still pretty powerful, so you still want to use that uh, backstab technique when you can. Uh, I was just thinking, there are some side, well, there is a side quest which involves you going back to the cavern, which means you have to go all the way up here again through the cavern, then all the way back. Can be a little frustrating. Oh, yeah, this guy. Oh yeah, this is the guy who lived because I couldn't actually attack him from behind. Because he stood with his back to the wall. Clever girl. And this is a useful uh, tactic uh, Rosalind has here. You can see that she will sometimes cast status effects and freeze enemies. Uh, quite useful if you're outnumbered. And that tactic does... It does have another use later on in a specific area. And I've got to say, for a PS2 game, it, I would say this area looks pretty good with the lighting. Yeah, but again, if you want to create something beautiful, the easiest way to do that in a game is just to have a dark area with lights here and there. Kind of like Starlight Zone in Sonic the Hedgehog. So I do have to wonder what all these buildings are for. Do people live there? Is it storage for the for all the party stuff they need to keep around? Oh, will you just let me get around. Now another. Now when it comes to the tripping enemies, once they're on the ground, obviously they obviously they can't attack, and their defense seems to go below sub-zero or something. So, yeah, it is worth tripping enemies no matter what. Anyway, you can see why Felice is one of my favourite characters in this game, definitely. Well, she not only has like the most interesting backstory, but uh, yeah, she's just a pretty cool badass to begin with. Well, when playing this game again, I do, I do realise the character of Jakar, the melee warrior. I thought he was a bit boring. You know, sort of a, a useful character, but not too interesting. He just attacks people, but you know, he's your typical wall uh, physical fighter. But he, he actually becomes a very useful himself. The start he can heal, and he becomes really resistant as you level him up. Jakar does pretty much become a you know, real, essentially one of the best characters. And I, I guess uh, I don't want to overlook Rosalind because she's always there in the background, healing and casting spells. So she's useful too. So yeah, it, it's a real case of Joseph is probably one of the least... <laughs> is probably your least u useful human member. <laughs> and that's not not to say he's useless, but... Uh, you know, we've got Fleet for Baxter, we've got Rosalind and her spells. And we've got Jakar, who's a physical wall. But uh, then again, Joseph is sort of the jack-of-all-trades and master of none. You know, that and I said before, that's... Oh, funny enough, summoning is something not too important in, the, in this game. I mean, I do make a point of showing it off because it's sort of within the game, but... 
Yeah, whatever. If I, if I was playing this just for myself, I, uh, I'll, I'll probably make it a Nog Summon run. I like that. Air Rosalind finishes him off with just an ice uh, arrow. Uh, speaking of which, when it comes to like, Rosalind, I just realised that I do level up her fire and ice spells so we get more more of a of a variety, but eh, I'm starting to think it wasn't really that useful. Like for example, I level level up her fire spells. When really I think I could have made do with fire fire arrow, the basic fire spell. And in fact, whenever you use Fireball, it creates an area of fiery damage, which can damage your party members as well. So in a sense, I sort of think it might have been a mistake to even teach her Fireball. Well, maybe level up her ice abilities, because those status effects come in handy. But anyway, here we find ourselves at the cavern. Please join us the next part, where we'll be diving in.